So today I'm going to be stripping down a Bosch style starter motor. I'm going to get it into all its separate components, check for any damage, any wear, clean it, regrease it, put it back together because I'm getting this. And I've already gone through and checked all the connections between the starter motor live, the earths that go back to the battery, and everything is good. Battery ampage and current is brilliant because it does the same thing while it's on a fully charged battery with a high quality battery charger on it, and I'm still getting it. So I'm going to strip it down really quickly. Uh, that's a 7mm on this one. may even be the problem quite highly corroded around there and that side that could be the ampage not getting through but we're going to strip it down just in case T25 it's quite dirty all the magnets are all intact this is the main mechanism, right? Let's, let's give it a good clean anyway. Cracking, heavy scoring, and make sure there's plenty of meat left on them. Then always check that they move freely within the housing. Just put a little bit round there. Don't too much on there. As you can see, that's where the corrosion's built up, and that is most likely what's caused the starting issues there's a voltage drop between where the battery is and where the cable goes on and that's the output from the switch side that feeds the motor windings so that's a good possibility but we don't actually know so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna clean up that I've just got a cheap little Dremel kit just to just to clean that up because you don't have access to a solenoid I can't strip that down much further there is probably corrosion in there, but I'll take this off and see what I can do. First of all, I'll clean that. So it's just a case of cleaning where the contact area goes. that's a lot better in there it's going to give a better contact area I'm also going to do the same with the nuts and possibly fit new nuts I've fully cleaned all the components with brake cleaner and that bit has all been painted satin black sanded back sand degrease cleaned all those other components cleaned all the bearings out I'm going to put this all back together in a nice steady orderly fashion so the only real thing that you need is a little bit of grease brake cleaner and the tools you use to strip them down. 
So we put a real thin film of grease around that. Just a real light coating. Spring in the centre section. And I'll just pop that in. And now you see that's how it works, the solenoid. Now let's build up the gear set first. So let's set plant your gears. grease in there just pop a little bit of grease on there it doesn't have to be a massive amount because any excess grease gets spat out and we don't want that we've already cleaned this off with the brake cleaner but we lightly applied a little bit of grease to those put them on there and there we have it that's how it works and that's how the gear system works in the centre to the outer gears and it catches the grease as it spins around and lubricates it. So that's good, good to go. And this is where the marking comes into place. Took a little bit of a sharpie pen, put a mark on there. Also done the same on this bit. And that detotes, let's find where it is. Lost it now. There it is. <laughs> so that is a little keyway that's built into the mechanism. So you know that that goes on that way. And you can just see a little bit of a keyway. And these holes also align where the bolts go, which you'll see. That goes through. So that allows that to go on a certain way, because there is one little notch cut into that so it'll only go in one way these are all little things that are put into place to help you get it right that's a little rubber bush sits on there okay. just a real light coating of grease on there And I've already put a little bit of grease within these little roller bearings that sit in there. And this is where I find fitting the little end of the solenoid is sometimes a little bit easier. And that's, there's three little dimples that sit in, they look like little bolt holes. So those three dimples align, your keyway aligns. This is sat in there because all of a sudden it's going to get tight and that's not going to be able to move as much. So, rubber bush. In. So, that looks straightforward. So, now you've lined all your keyway bits up. Little square off cut sits around that bush and then your keyway goes it down into there. And that allows that you try it any other way it just won't sit home these are all little things that are put in by the manufacturer to help the build process now that goes in easy enough and i'm just going to use the copper side of the hammer just to knock it down a little bit now this is the bit that goes from right i've already put a little bit of grease on those teeth now this being a magnetic field within there that's suddenly you're going to shoot it down so it'll be a lot easier to put the bushes on now but that doesn't work so we'll fit that in and then all of a sudden it will suck itself in and then you've just got to turn it a little bit so it all so it's just got to go that little bit more there. and there we go in and of course you've had your greasy mitts on there where clean cloths actually come into play even though that was clean before that's what it's just picked up from my hands so this is the tricky bit this is where most people are going to really struggle so pay attention to this bit 
this isn't the ideal way of doing it but it does actually work so I've used a 24 mil socket in my case because I didn't have anything else that would actually fit in that hole if you were to buy a new bush pack it would be perfect within that hole and those bushes would be pushed into its maximum amount so there's your little bushes spring loaded as you can see it just moves now this is a little bit too small but it's doable because as I put it in one side's going to engage the other side isn't and that's where I've got to use a screwdriver or a little hook just to help ease the copper contacts on the braided on there just to pull it up a little bit to go up round and again this only goes in one way it is a little bit deteriorated that but there is good continuity through there and I believe that's just surface so let's pop that on and you can just feel it oh no that's that's managed to find its way on okay I wasn't expecting that potluck okay that's good otherwise this is where you'd, you'd be just teasing it in with a screwdriver just on the end but hey ho and then this little backpack that that's got the bronze brush in there which this actually spins on and keeps the, sh the motor shaft aligned so we'll just pop that in you feel that little bit of resistance as it's all trying to merge together and if you've done it right that bolt will go all the way through the casing and start by hand if it only goes halfway or a little section of the way you know you've probably got a problem particularly if it doesn't do it on the other side just something's not lined up take it all apart start again and in my case it's a seven mil nipped again just nipped now this is where the shaft comes out this and you'll see there's a bit of movement there a bit of play again just a little smidgen of grease on there to help it move this little c clip doesn't actually really secure that much it just sits there so to stop that from spinning out disappearing that's where that goes in there's no actual bushing in there but then just put a little bit of grease around there that's where I put that in and then that will just merge together a little bit of resistance which is good Okay, and that's all on. Now this was the original problem I had, I think, because it was all quite heavily corroded there, and it wasn't too seized in there, but it's very hard to tell. So both sides of those are clean, whereas if you've got a new bush back, you get a new one of those as well. And I've also cleaned up, so I'll just place that on. And again just smooth that with sandpaper very light fine 400 600 grit just make it a good and you'll be able to turn that and you can hear the motor spinning because it's sort of got like a little one-way clutch how that works when it comes up there's plenty of videos out there for this. So there we've got a rebuilt Bosch starter motor without any new parts in this case. Parts you could have changed. There's that solenoid which is available. 
brush pack definitely available and probably the windings you'd be able to to pick up and find but if you're going into the windings and the mechanism you're probably going to be better off just finding a scrap second hand one and actually re rebuilding stripping and rebuilding that one but anyway if you found that at all useful subscribe because i do various fag related content this is actually going on my tdi corrado conversion so that's actually off a six speed right the moment of truth let's see if she starts up any better i've got the bonnet popped and a bucket of water just in case i'm scared still scared oh that was good let's try that a second time well that sounds a lot more positive cleaner crank definitely doesn't sound like it's struggling I think that one's been a success and I've saved myself anywhere from 70 to 150 pounds on a reconned amazing so if you found that useful do me a favor like and subscribe you don't have to switch on the bell notifications because the rest of the stuff you might not like but then again you might so this TDI Corrado is now a starter Let's try again, just one for one more. Wow, it's like a new car. I'm happy with that. So I'm Crispy. This has been one of my projects. Thanks very much for watching. Ta-da!